Rankings. In lots of video games, when you get through a level or complete a task, you get a ranking. Most often, it's the letter grading system, much like in school. With one major difference, especially if the game came from Japan, better than the A rank is the S rank. But what does it even mean? Also, why even have a grading system? Aren't we doing this to escape the real world? Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, what is the origin of the S rank? So why would we rank ourselves in video games? Well, let's start off by picturing a game in which you have a specific number of tasks that there are various ways to do, some of them faster, some of them better, and some might consider that there may be a competitive element here. In fact, lots of video games are specifically made to encourage competition, which is something rather interesting to think about, seeing as we consider video games a community on some level. Is a community really something intended to be competitive, or is it a lot of people who like something and like doing it with each other? And that's not to say that it is wrong to have some friendly competition within a community, it's just something that I think helps lay the groundwork for why we have such a thing before we talk about where it came from. So for a moment, let's stop considering video games. Let's just talk about community. Friendly competition within a community happens all the time. Neighborhood kids like to play basketball. People who become friends with each other at work often have little workplace competitions as well. So is it really that bizarre to think that within the community of video games, we might have some competitive element? Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean it can't get out of control or that all competition is healthy competition and it does get out of hand, but some friendly level of competition is certainly good, especially in something that is ostensibly about skill. Now, when the neighborhood kids get together to play basketball, do they not keep score? Well, sometimes true they just go shoot hoops but other times they do keep score they do get competitive they do actually want to figure out who is better within this game now imagine that sonic the hedgehog is neighborhood kid basketball sonic the hedgehog isn't really a game that works in two players so the best way to compete would be to keep track of various metrics and say these metrics come together to form this certain rating if somebody gets a better rating, that means they are quite possibly better at the game, at least by the criteria set forth by the developers of the game. It's important to know that people don't necessarily always consider that to be quote-unquote good at the game. There are entire communities of people dedicated to finding ways to break games and consider that to be the interesting way to handle this sort of thing. For instance, the Glitch Speedrun community, that is a very, very interesting community because it is based entirely around playing the games in a way that would totally disregard ratings. They don't just disregard the criteria of the game, they disregard the programming of the game. I don't know that it really contributes to the main point we're getting at, but it's worth mentioning just because I feel like just acting as though getting a good rating is the point of a video game kind of betrays the point of video games. And there's more to say about that, but let's get into the origin of the S rank. Now, obviously doing S above A implies that having a rank above that would mean that you're extra good. A Reddit user by the name of Nanashi Hatch did some research on the S rank to figure out exactly where it came from. Some other users had made a thread attempting to find the origins of it and came up with an article in a giant bomb wiki that wasn't really about the origin. It just basically said that game designers came up with it. So Nanashi Hatch did some digging. They ended up finding a 1972 Led Zeppelin concert ticket stub that was on sale. Now, that sounds very unrelated, but on the ticket, an S mark is clearly printed. This echoes how concert tickets are normally classified today when you go see a concert in Japan. Today, when you buy concert tickets in Japan, it says a letter and then a Japanese symbol meaning seat. Previously, it was two Japanese symbols, and they were labeled by grade, first grade, second grade, and even normal or basic grade. There wasn't really a standard system, but that was basically how it was done before 1972, when rock and roll started showing up in Japan, which, by the way, was mostly in English, at least at the time. So anyway, you had A seats, B seats, and of course you had S seats, which was above A seats. This naming convention was adopted into a lot of different areas of Japanese culture. For instance, classes in various sports, like motorboat racing. I'd say that if you're looking for parallels regarding the S rank in Japanese culture, this is probably the most 
probable explanation for it, especially considering how many things in Japanese culture adopted this naming convention. It makes perfect sense that, being it's literally using an English letter to denote how good something is, it makes sense. But this makes a point that is actually very interesting to consider. The need to quantify exactly how good something is conflates these two things. This can feel very validating to be told, yes, you did as good as you can do. But it also helps frame our experience in a way that may not be ideal. Yes, a little friendly competition is certainly a good thing. Just remember that a rank or a number that says how good you are is just that. It is not its context whatsoever. If a publisher wanted to shoehorn in different rules later, they very much could. There's nothing stopping them. And ultimately, the reason we play video games isn't really to be told we're good at them, but because they're fun. Yes, it's very cool, in my opinion, to know that Led Zeppelin is in some way involved in why there's an S rank in video games nowadays. And it's also very interesting to see how culture can appropriate itself in various different aspects of itself and create something that would seem totally unrelated. And yes, it does make me feel very good to get an S rank, even better knowing where it came from. But I just think it's worth saying, if you never ever get an S rank, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you had a good time. Otherwise, why are we even playing? What are your favorite games to try to get S ranks in? Leave us a comment, and if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you're not subscribed, now would be a good time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is of course a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this one. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time, right here on GameRanks.